Welcome back guys to another one. Today let's do a storage roundup courtesy of Silicon Power where they kindly sent us over one example from their entire inventory. So grab a snack or a drink because this is going to be a video filled with a lot of numbers. As you will see we have everything from an extreme budget friendly solution all the way to a top performance one with matching endurance numbers. So from top to bottom we have the only gen 4 x4 US 70, then the UD 70 which uses QLC cells and then the A80 and A60 series. Pricing wise I will link everything in the description below since there are too many models to cover in one go as you can see from this chart. For now I will highlight the ones I have. All the models will come shipped in this minimalist yet effective enclosure that lets you see the actual M.2s. There will be differences in the overall color theme so you can tell them apart, a matter that's present on the SSD stickers as well. Opening them up, this is the minimalist transparent plastic clamshell that protects the SSDs. All of them use a blue standard PCB and the chip layout will vary in regards to a single sided or double sided perspective. The US70 Gen 4 X4 series is powered by Fizen's game-changing 8-channel E16 Gen 4 SSD controller and Kioxia 96-layer TLC flash. On this 1TB model we see one of the two half a terabyte SK Hynix DDR4 DRAM cache chips. The other one is present on the other side of the PCB underneath the sticker next to the controller. Then those on the left are the TLC NAND flash chips. Next up is the 2TB UD70, which uses a Fison E12S PCI 3.0 X4 8-channel NVMe 1.3 compliant SSD controller. Whew. There is a single 4GB Kingston DRAM chip, while the controller interfaces with 16 dies of Micron's 1TB and 28A 96-layer QLC flash. All of these occupy only one side of the UD70, which makes this a perfect upgrade for any low-profile sub-laptop machine that only accepts a single-sided M.2. With the 1TB A80 Gen 3 X4 M.2, we discover that it uses Fizen's E12 NVMe controller paired with Toshiba's Bix 3 64-layer TLC NAND flash. Lastly, the 1TB 860 takes a different approach to its DRAM less design by using an entry level SM2263XT NVMe SSD controller paired with Intel 64 layer TLC NAND. It has a very interesting trick up its sleeve called Host Memory Buffer Technology or HMB. Basically, it uses some of the host memory for caching, thus keeping some performance levels competitive at a lower price point. There is of course a drawback that it will have a bit more latency than DRAM based SSDs, particularly when they are under heavy load. More on this later in the testing section. Let's load them up one by one and analyze our findings. Our first benchmark is a random access test from HD Tune Pro. The 1TB US70, since it's on the higher Gen 4 X4 bandwidth, it naturally becomes our new chart champion, finally taking the crown from the Samsung 970 EVO Plus. The real surprise though comes from the A60 which puts its HMB tech to good use since it uses some of the host's memory for caching and gets an overall boost in this test, kinda ignoring its stock rated speeds. Then the UD70 and A80 perform also really good, both ending up beating the Crucial P1. Next up is the popular Crystal Disk Mark version 7. In the read benchmark we get a reshuffling of the ranks since our previous test. The US70 is leading the charts once again, but now the UD70 is neck and neck with the Samsung Drive. The A80 has strong overall numbers, while the A60 just confirms its advertised speeds. Then moving to the right test, which is even more important in a real life scenario, the US70 is an absolute performer and is very consistent in the right test as well. The A70 and the UD70 are also close to the Samsung 970 EVO Plus drive, while the A60 shows its DRAM less limits, but still delivers great numbers. In the last synthetic benchmark, Ato, the Gen 4 X4 US70 maintained its status of top dog. What's really interesting is that the A60 mimics the results we have seen in the HD Tune Pro benchmark, but taking second place, while the A80 and UD70 deliver good results as well. Now let's see how practical they are in some other real life scenarios like app installation. Let's take a full suit of Microsoft Office 2019 and time it. 
as you can see there's nothing to stop the Gen 4X for US 70. The UD 70 edges a bit in front of the EVO Plus while the A80 matches it. Here are the loading times in Adobe's popular photo editor Photoshop. All of them perform really well in burst speeds and access times. Another performance test is to import a 5GB 4K 60fps 70 megabits per second video sample into Premiere Pro and measure how much time it takes to process it in order to be ready to edit on the timeline. The overall pattern is really clear by now and the US 70 has no match from the Gen 3 X4 realm while the others are performing really well given the competition. Before I continue with the real life transfer tests, let's have a look at the temperatures because we want to avoid thermal throttling and at the same time to see how the drives behave without any airflow. On the left side of each screenshot we have the temperature for each drive without the side fan and then on the right with it running at around 40-50% RPM. Ambient was at recorded 18 degrees Celsius. How I set up my build you can check it here. As you'll see the results are quite impressive because if we take an ITX case like the Dan A4SFX, which has no airflow on the CPU chamber side, all of the heat will compound from the chipset, VRM and motherboard which will naturally rise where the M.2 slot is on this particular motherboard. So you will witness an incredible delta variation. So let's begin. The highest performing drive, the US 70 Gen 4 X4 will produce the most heat. With no airflow we reached 83 degrees Celsius and with a side fan on the temperatures didn't go over 44 degrees. So that's a delta of 39 degrees difference. Insane. This being said I only noticed a performance penalty in the sequential Q1 read and write and only for the reads regarding the random Q32 and Q1 tests. The UD70 reached 68 degrees Celsius with a fan off and with it it dropped to 40 degrees Celsius. Delta 28. The A80 was hovering around the max temperature of 69 degrees with no cooling while with active cooling it didn't go over 50 degrees Celsius. Delta 19. Lastly the A60 displayed up to 73 degrees Celsius with no airflow and 38 degrees with the fan on. Delta 35. So despite the fact that all of these drives were in the hotbox with no airflow, as you can see from the benchmark runs from Crystal Disk Mark, none of them went into down throttle mode besides the US 70 but only by a small margin. Now for the final practical test which revolves around some real life copy tests. To start I will copy to the M.2 a single 10GB video file to test the burst speed, followed by a copy of the same file from the M.2 onto themselves. Then the same process is repeated but with a big folder with mixed files totaling 67GB which is the installation folder for the Division 2 game title. Here are the results for the 1TB US 70 Gen 4 drive. On the left we have the files being copied from another SSD onto the US 70 while on the right we have the copy tests done on the drive. The burst speed is excellent on both scenarios while the large mixed file transfer it gives it a run for its money depending on its uh, SLC cache. Now let's see what happens to the 2TB UD70 Gen 3 with its QLC cells. The drive does an excellent job and it's up there with the US70 regarding the burst speed. Only in the mixed file test transfer we see a few hiccups but nothing detrimental. Next up is the 1TB A80 Gen 3. It delivers stellar results on the burst but because it uses an older overall design it has a big downturn on the large mixed file copy test onto itself, mainly because the SLC cache got filled. Lastly we have the 1TB A60 Gen 3 DRAM less M.2. No problem on the burst test but it shows its limits when it comes to the large endurance file transfers. So there you have it guys, I think silicon power achieved something remarkable here. All of these drives that I have tested today did a great job for their intended purpose. More precisely it's about the pricing since you get a lot of bang for your buck. Speaking individually, the US 70 basically offers you a Gen 4 drive for Gen 3 pricing. Then the UD70 is a drive that has finally broken the 10 cents per gigabyte barrier, which despite its QRC cells and native lower endurance ratings, it compensates a lot with its big buffer and clever Fison controller. EA80 it's the oldest series presented here but that's just on paper because it uses TLC cells and it's priced at a level of QLC. See yet again the pricing does the magic here. With the A80, well, this is a very pleasant surprise since just by looking at the prices you know they can't get lower than this. Heck, we are talking about QLC SATA SSD numbers here. 
Basically, instead of buying a SATA SSD, just get the 860 and voila, you get up to 4 times the peak performance. Of course, with all of them, when the SLC cache gets filled, performance will drop, but we are talking about the definition of bargains here in the M.2 world. So guys, don't be afraid to give them a chance. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Alex out.